All right, so let's uh, take a look at um, uh, Spring Boot and Heroku. Uh, last last week, we, uh, we took a look at uh, uh, some of the requirements of needing to have a, a, a JDK uh, to having um, I installed the Spring Boot uh, command line interface. Um, also, I asked you to set up a um, an account on Heroku. Uh, and I imagine most of you have. I see that there was some questions on Piazza about it. Um, uh, right now, the only real thing that we need is just an account of Heroku uh, that you have, in, you have a JDK uh, and uh, you have uh, the Spring Boot command line interface, right? Everything else, uh, please try to get that as soon as possible. We won't need it for a couple weeks still, but you know, I'd rather deal with those pain, that pain uh, early on and not have us you know, catch us uh, down the road. Uh, so we'll, we'll set up a, uh, an account. We already, I imagine you already have that. Uh, I, I do, uh, obviously. We'll, we'll set up a, um, also the, uh, the Heroku command line interface that allow you to log in to Heroku from your command line, from your, from your machine. Um, also, the Spring Boot, uh, the uh, CLI command line interface will allow you to get up, get up and, and running with uh, creating um, uh, Java uh, middle tier applications. And that's where we're going to be getting started. And we'll be using that for the remainder of the uh, half of the semester. I will, we'll be using this uh, Spring Boot Java middle tier. Uh, we'll, we'll add a uh, React uh, front end uh, in a week or so. Uh, but for now, the, 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 we'll just be using the middle tier for now. Uh, it'll be a web uh, middle tier, so it'll allow us to create you know, simple web pages, CSS, JavaScript, uh, the, the, you know, the most basic stuff. Uh, so yeah, it, it all starts with uh, Spring init, dash dash dependencies equal web, and that will create a an application. So let's uh, let's do that. Uh, here we have a directory where uh, I'm going to be doing all the work for the remainder of the semester. There's uh, um, just videos are in here. Uh, we'll create a um, an app and uh, so Spring in it. So Spring in it and uh, the dependencies depend dependencies uh, equal web. And I had suggested a naming convention such as um, uh, web dev um, dash the semester. So this will be fall uh, 18, uh, maybe your username. Uh, then, um, then what this is, right? It's a server. Uh, and But we'll have several types of servers. We'll have a server uh, written in Java. Uh, and later on, we'll have also a server written in Node.js. So just to distinguish the, the two servers, uh, I'm going to call them uh, this way. Uh, so uh, this will use the uh, Spring, Spring Boot CLI. It creates it, and basically it's a directory that if you go in there, uh, it's, uh, it already sets it up uh, with a source directory where we're going to be spending most of our time. Uh, the POM file, if you're familiar with that, is the description of, this, um, of the project, says so any dependencies that this project might have with. Uh, and we can compile it uh, using Maven clean install. Uh, but let's not do that just yet. Uh, instead, let's uh, create a, an additional folder that was, wasn't created uh, for us by default. Uh, we'll create that and under source, um, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a main directory and a test directory. Uh, we'll be spending most of our time under the main directory. Under the main directory, uh, right now there's, a, there's some Java uh, source code, there's some resources. We'll leave the resources for now. We'll come back to it a little later when we when we connect the database. We'll need to uh, declare what database we're going to connect to in the resources. We'll do that a little later. Uh, but for now, in, in here in this directory, uh, we'll create a, um, a directory called Web App. Uh, so let's uh, let's make that directory, and, and in there we'll create a, a file index.html. So in here uh, we'll stream. We'll we'll create a some um, some some really simple uh, application. So we'll this will be uh, H1. Uh, so welcome uh, to web dev. Uh, obviously, we could use the, I, the IDE of your preference, um, um, IntelliJ or or Eclipse and whatnot. So once we have this this uh, this uh, index at HTML, this web app directory is the is where our it's a standard name, right? So our, our middle tier knows that this is the public directory where to source all the content, anybody who comes and visits the, the middle tier. And index, like the name suggests, this is the, the entry point to this directory, right? It's the default, default uh, uh, file. If, uh, if you don't 
ask for any particular file, it, you'll get that index file. Okay. Um, so so we can um, let's see where are we? We are at the root. At the root, we can say Maven clean install, and this is uh, going to compile and package our our application and uh, into an, into a single tarf uh, a jar file. Um, let's see. All right, so it's success, and we'll see that uh, there's a brand new uh, directory in here, the target directory, and that's where it puts our our file. So we can we can um, we can see the content. Uh, target uh, has a couple of jar files. Um, it's a little bit too big. Oh, there we go. So we got um, some generated force, uh, sources. So this is the one we want. This jar file over here. So we can run our server by just but just invoking that jar file, we can say Java run the jar file that is inside of the target directory, the web dev genunzi jar file, yada, yada, yada. So we'll do that. Uh, that starts up a uh, local uh, server for us, listening at a default port 8080. All right, so now we have the server running locally on our machine, and we can point now our, our uh, uh, browser to this, um, uh, to this uh, uh, middle tier. Uh, so in our, um, in our server, uh, um, here, let's uh, start up a, um, let's reduce it for a second. And in here, we can point to localhost uh, 8080. And let's ask for index. And for index, this comes up to web, you know, welcome to web dev. That's the file we were, we, we, ju we just implemented. Everybody okay? All right. Um, notice that we sp explicitly asked for index, but if I, instead, if I, um, if I don't put the index, I still get that same file, right? So the server, uh, by default, if you don't ask for any specific file, it uh, it, it uh, serves up the, uh, the index file right in that directory. Uh, the 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 server knows to map slash this root context uh, to map it to that uh, directory we just created, right? The um, the, uh, the 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 directory that we just created inside of source um, main uh, web app. So. Physically, that slash in the in the in the in the browser maps to this physical directory on the on the file system. Okay. Right. That's that's the, that's the just, that's just by convention. Right. The middle tier knows that by convention, if you hit that server that's running at that particular port, it will server from that uh, from this um, from this public directory. If I try to run the same instance in a different command line, it'll fail. It'll say no. Somebody's already listening at port 8080. Right, uh, only one server can be listening at one particular port at a time. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, let's uh, let's continue. Uh, so we created the directory, we created the index file, we did Maven clean install, we ran the Java, uh, and uh, when we point to the to our to our uh, server, now we see the content of that index file. Um, so eventually, we want to be able to say, uh, share this with other folks, right? This is this is a server running our on our, our machine. We have to make this available to uh, to the to the to the rest of the world, right? Uh, so to do that, we're going to be using the uh, Heroku uh, to uh, to host our our remote servers, okay? And the way Heroku works is that uh, we need to uh, put our all our source code in it in a um, in a source control, all right? Um, in Heroku's source control. Uh, we're going to be actually working with two source controls, right? One is Heroku's, which is private, right? Only Heroku sees it, uh, and obviously, obviously, you can post to it and push all your content. Uh, but uh, usually, that that is not available to everybody else, right? It's only for the uh, use for deploying uh, content to to the server. Uh, instead, we're going to have a, a a mirror of that uh, repository, which is going to be your private. Uh, repository we get, which you're going to share with us, right? And that's where we're going to be using for grading you. Yes. Uh, so it's going to be a little awkward that you have to maintain two repositories, uh, one where uh, you push to uh, to deploy and 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 restart the server, and the other one just to share with us so that we can grade you. Okay. Uh, but it's not it's not uncommon in uh, an industry that you you're you know you're handling you know two three dozens of uh, of uh, source source control repositories. Uh, so anyway, so to uh, to get to get going with the uh, repository, we're going to uh, do a git init. Uh, let's see. It's, um, actually, there's no init. There's no. It's not. A, it's not a, a git repository. Where are we? Uh, okay. So we are at the root. So at the root, we do a git init. Uh, so it initializes it and just creates this uh, dot uh, dot git. Notice that this git ignore was already there. Okay. The uh, when we created the project, it already had created git ignore with the correct. 
files to ignore, right? Like all our build files or our class files, jar files, none of that we want to put in repository. Okay. So make sure, right, whenever you're going to commit, none of those, those files uh, should go to the repository. Anything that can be recreated from source should never make it to the repository. Okay. Only source control. Uh, so that was created for you, but we just created .git. Um, uh, in, uh, and here we're gonna just get, uh, we're just gonna do a git status uh, and see that, you know, make sure that, that git uh, wants to commit, you know, uh, is tracking only, only these files that we care about. Uh, notice that the target directory is not there, see that? So the target directory is where we're building all our jar files, it's not there, which is great, That's, we're looking for that. Uh, so we're gonna add everything for now. Uh, get status. So, oop. get status. Status. Uh, yeah, the bomb file. Um, our index file is there. Our properties file. Right now, it's empty, but we'll come back to that. That's where we declare our our, our, our database a little later. Uh, our our um our initial Java file. Um, okay. So let's uh let's uh, commit this. So git uh, git commit. Uh, first commit. And um, all right, so it's been committed. What we want to do now is uh, uh, log into Heroku. I'm already logged into Heroku. Uh, it will ask you to log in with the credentials you open the account with on Heroku. Right? It'll connect. It'll make sure that you're you're who you say you are. Once you do that, uh, you can say Heroku create. Uh, Heroku create is going to parse your directory. It's going to try and guess and, and and understand what type of server this is. Right? If it finds a palm file, right? It says, ooh, this is a Java server. Right? And it will a, for you will create a the right version of the server on the on the remote server on the on their machines, right? If instead it finds a you know package.json file that says it says oh this is a Node.js server, right? So it'll know it's smart enough to know what server you need uh, remotely. Uh, so so we'll we'll uh, we'll do that. So we'll do Heroku uh, create again at the at the um, root. Uh, it'll say you know Heroku create. Uh, and says, okay, uh, it has created for us uh, a remote server and, and mapped it to this randomly generated name, Nameless River. Okay. Um, and, uh, and also it has created for us a, a remote repository, right, for us to push our content to, to that Heroku uh, instance. Uh, so what, what if, um, um, if we take a look at the, um, at uh, dot git, and well, actually, no, if we say git, if you say git remote, uh, you'll notice that has created, right? This git create has created a Heroku entry in our, in our git uh, as, a, as a remote repository. We can ask even where is it pointing to, uh, V, I think it is. It says that correctly, it's pointing to this, uh, this repository, right? this remote repository, and we can push our content, which we just committed uh, to this remote repository, and it will kick off our server. It'll, 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 um, you know, the, uh, our Maven clean install we did locally is going to kick it off on the remote server, right? It's going to push everything to the source. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, let's uh, do a git uh, push uh, to our Heroku. Uh, and the master is the current git uh, uh, branch that we're in. So we'll kick that off. This will copy our local uh, repository to the remote repository. Uh, it detects that it's a Java app correctly, right? It does the JDK. Uh, it also re reads our palm file, right? Our palm file says that we need a um, uh, all the uh, you know, certain JDK that we need a uh, all the, the the web libraries. It'll download all the all the all the jar files that it needs for the remote server. Uh, it, it runs Maven clean install. It, it generates the jar file, and it, it's going to try and launch the, uh, the the server. And um, it says, okay, so it looks like it's uh, it was uh, it was available. And we can either just point our our, our browser to this uh, to this uh, URL, or we can just we can type here Heroku um, open. So Heroku open is just a shortcut just to open our browser to point to that uh, to that URL. And indeed, we have our our um, our server now running on Heroku. Right? As, you, as, as you notice, uh, locally we have our welcome to web dev, and we have remotely you know running at um, Nameless River. Right, running uh, the same content we have locally. Make sense, right? So, so the the uh, you know daily as you work uh, throughout through the course, uh, you'll be doing you know most of your development locally on your machine. Once you feel confident that this is what you want to release, and uh, for you know for us, the TAs and myself to take a look at, 
you know, you do a push to Heroku, right? And we, we suggest uh, being very verbose uh, and being, you know, um, committing uh, uh, very frequently, right? That doing your small little commits, uh, that, that will be, a, that will allow us, myself and you and, you, and yourself to, you know, if you, if you run into a, an issue or you paint yourself into a corner, it'll be easy to just backtrack to the previous commit, all right? If you, you know, if you change 30 files uh, and, and then all of a sudden it was just working two seconds ago and it's not working, right? Well, which, what did you change? It'll be make it, make it so much harder to help you, okay? So please, please, you know, every, you know, once you have reached a particular milestone, do a commit, okay? Even if you don't push it right away to Heroku, right? Uh, you know, do frequent commit commits, you know, small little commits. Uh, it'll be easier to backtrack, you know, if you do break it. And we will break things, okay? We will break things and it'll make it easier if you have multiple commits. Um, all right, so we have the, uh, the, the, the server running uh, locally and remote. Here's our, our local server. Um, let's see, uh, let's continue here. It's running uh, the tail. You can uh, you can rename your application uh, by using Heroku apps and then rename and then give it your own name. Uh, so for instance, let's uh, I'm going to rename my 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 um, I'll rename my application as the as the name of the directory. Okay, so where are we? So we're in web dev yada 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 Janunzi yada yada. Okay, so uh, so we'll do a uh, let's copy that. Where is it Heroku? Copy, oops, uh, rename, and uh, it, again, from the root of the directory, I'm going to rename it. So instead of nameless river, uh, it'll be called uh, webdev f18 Janunzi server Java. All right, so it's been renamed, and uh, notice that our repository, right, notice that our repository, which was pointing uh, before to our you know nameless river uh, Git repository, it was su it successfully renamed our repository as well, which is great. Right? Otherwise, when you do a push, it will fail. Right? It will try. You know, it would try to push to the to the old repository instead of the new one. All right. Uh, actually, let's try Git remote v. Yeah, it looks like it's pointing to the right thing. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, URL. Da, 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 da. This this just uh you know just reminds you that you might need to change the remote uh, URL, right? If you've played around with uh, your uh, Git. Okay. Any 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 questions? Yes. Absolutely. It's not no longer it's no longer available. Right now now you would point to. No, actually, let's try it out. Uh, let's see. So if you do Heroku uh, open. Right, so now Heroku open, notice that it points to web dev, F18, Janunzi, server, Java, and so on and so forth, right? Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Jose here. Uh, please remember to subscribe and like the video. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you.